Hey, this is Larry with Man Cave Mayhem. Today we're going to do an oil change on a 2009 Yamaha Majesty scooter. And if you haven't, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try and answer them as soon as I can. Now on with the video. All right, the tools you're going to need for this oil change is a 19 millimeter wrench, or you can use, if you want to be a caveman, you can use an adjustable wrench like a um, crescent wrench. Uh, you can use a quarter inch drive ratchet. <clears throat> this is what I like to use because it's smaller. Extension, you can probably get it away without using the extension. You want a 12 millimeter socket and an eight millimeter socket. They don't have to be deep sockets. And also a pick tool is handy to get the filter out. Um, you also need an oil pan of some sort, a funnel, and you know some rubber gloves, safety glasses, all that good so stuff. So there's your engine oil drain bolt. I always drain the oil out of this one right there because there's a screen and it gives me the opportunity to inspect the screen. But I'll pull this bolt as well. I'll pull this after I pull the other one. But then that just assures me that all the oil is out of the crankcase. All right, just to give you guys the lay of the land, on the left-hand side of the bike, if you're sitting on the bike, it'd be on your left-hand side is where your oil filter is going to be. You got three bolts right there, if you can see it. Um, and I believe those are eight millimeter bolts. Those are the eight millimeters. So we're gonna take those off. That get that accesses the oil filter. I'm gonna bring you around to the other side. This right here is where you drain it. So we're gonna start going on, we're gonna get this drained. All right, you're gonna wanna put your drain pan under here. And then on this, uh, on the right hand side, if you're sitting on the bike, you've got a 19 millimeter nut. And that's gonna that's gonna be where we drain this. So we're gonna get this started right now. Pay, pay attention. You got a screen here. You want to inspect, and uh, that's gonna drop out with everything. You're gonna want to take this out, clean it up, and that'll go right back in where it came from. And uh, so we'll get that done, get that cleaned up, and we'll set that aside for right now. Try not to lose your cap in the oil like I did. Um, it'll pop down on you pretty quick. All right, now that this is cleaned up, you're gonna wanna inspect the O-ring. My own ring looks good. There's no nicks or gouges in it. Uh, this was clean, there was no debris in it. So we're gonna set this aside. That's how it goes in, back in. So we're gonna set that aside and let this oil drain some more and we'll move around to the left side and start working on the oil filter. You're gonna take your eight millimeter socket. I'm using a quarter inch drive. It's got a little swivel on the end, nothing crazy, but there's kind of a weird angle on that top one. So you may need a swivel. You may need a wrench maybe, but I'm gonna go ahead and use this and we'll get these taken off. Get all these taken off, get things out of the way. You can move your kickstand out of the way. I don't really feel the need to do that right now, but we're gonna pop these off. Pull that bottom screen. You're probably not gonna get a ton of oil out of this, but I like to pull it off, clean it up, and put it back just, just to inspect everything, make sure I'm not getting any weird leaks or anything. See, I'm not getting any oil out of this because I've already drained it, but that also has a that has a crush washer, a brass crush washer that you may want to replace or may not want to replace, but I'm not going to replace it. I haven't had any leaking problems yet, so I'm going to go ahead and put it back, wipe it up, clean it up, put it back. Now pay careful attention while you're doing this to uh, make sure that uh, everything goes back in the right order. Look at your filter when it comes out. Make sure you put it back in the way it came out. Um, that's always a problem. In this cover off, you can see that this thing's spring loaded. So just be aware of that when you're taking it off. So everything doesn't just pop out on you and you can keep track of everything. So we're going to go ahead and get this off and I'll show you the order that it goes. Your filter cover, see the spring. Now notice the, the way the filter is. Let's put the light on that. See how the filter is. Now you may have to get a pick tool, your pick tool to pull that out, but that'll give you an idea. Uh, of the positioning of the filter and which end. So this is the end, of, this is the new filter. So that smaller end, looks like a relief valve or whatever on that end, uh, faces out and this is the larger open end that goes in. So we're gonna set that aside and we're gonna go after this with the pick. We'll get in here, get the light on this so I can kind of show you what we're doing here. So we're gonna go after this and just kind of bring this out. 
Just be careful as you're doing it. It's going to try and fight you a little bit. Here it comes. So there's the old filter. And we'll set that in the nasty oil. If I can get it off the doggone pick tool. There you go. And that is, that looks like a little pressure relief valve on the end of that thing. So now we're going to wipe that out. You can clean that out or whatever you want to do. I usually wipe the old oil out. Now you have to be careful too because you just want to check everything in here, make sure nothing fell out and you're all good. So now we're going to wipe the oil out of that and put the new filter in. All right, now that that's efficiently wiped out, we're going to go ahead and put the new filter in. That's going to go in here like so. Make sure it's snug in there. Make sure it's seated. And now just we're going to start by putting everything back in reverse order. Again, clean this up, inspect the O-ring. If you need a new O-ring, obviously you're going to want to get one. Mine's good, so I'm going to go ahead and put it back uh, the way all I right, found it. Now that we got that all reattached, isn't she pretty? So now you can clean it up, wipe it all down, and then we're going to move over to the right-hand side where we're going to replace the oil screen and oil drain cap. Replace the oil drain cap. I like to wipe everything down, kind of. And You can put some... Uh, WD-40 or something on a rag and just kind of wipe this all down and get some of the residual dirt and grease that sometimes get it gets attracted to the underside of your bike. So we'll get that taken care of right now. Now that I got all the loose dirt and grime from around that, I'm going to go ahead and replace this. We're going to slide this up in here. And it's going to have some tension on it, so you have, have to at least get it started. I like to get it started before I put a wrench on it. And I just go finger tight and then I just slightly snug it up with a wrench after I get it all the way on. You can see some of the residual oil there seeping. That's okay because then that gets on the uh, seal and it will make it a little easier to come off next time. So now we're going to take our 19 millimeter wrench and we're just going to snug it up now. I guess you could be more barbaric if you wanted to and, and use a crescent wrench but I choose just to use the 19 millimeter, less chance of slipping. You're just going to want to snug that up. I'm sure there's torque specs on that. I don't have them because I just go by feel. What, what you're doing is you're seating that O-ring there, and uh, that'll prevent any leakage. So now that's on. Now it's time for the oil. Okay, so you're going to be on the right-hand side, and you can see Mr. Dipstick right there. Thanks. Yamaha for not making it to where we have to remove plastics to get to the dipstick Although it's still kind of a pain in the butt because the exhaust is right there But you can manage so we're gonna go ahead and pull that dipstick right now Once you get the dipstick off do the same thing. You're gonna want to inspect the o-ring. They're usually in pretty good shape um, And then you're gonna want to wipe down the dust off the dipstick and around the fill area there So we're gonna do that now and then we'll get okay, back. Okay, according to the owner's manual it says when you're checking the oil to warm it up for a few minutes, let the oil settle. And then what you're going to want to do without screwing it in, you're going to check the oil level. So some of them you screw in, some of them you don't. This one you're just going to place in there like that to the top part of the thread there. No, no threading it in. And that's how you're going to check your oil level. And a lot of bikes do that. So you're going to get a false reading if you thread it all the way in to check it. So just be aware of that. All right, be before we get into a big oil debate or anything, I'm not going to deal with that. But uh, the owner's manual calls for 1040. I have some Shell Rotella T6 synthetic that people run in bikes all the time. Uh, this is actually a non-wet clutch application. So there's meaning it's not a regular motorcycle as far as wet clutch is concerned. The clutch on this bike is not in the engine crankcase. It is actually a dry clutch setup. If you're familiar with scooters, obviously you are, if you're watching this video. So this does apply. You can use this in motorcycles because it does have wet clutch applications, but this is a 540 weight or a five winter 40. So it's 5W40 um, and it'll work fine in this bike. I have some, so I'm gonna use it. So. I don't want to get any hate 
hate uh, comments on this, but uh, this I use this a lot, and it works great. I haven't had any issues with it, so uh, we're going to run that. But you're more than welcome to get motorcycle oil and run in this, uh, whatever you guys prefer. But that's what I'm using, so we'll go ahead and add socket, that. put on this, get that, you know, take that drain bolt out. You can at least inspect the gasket and everything, so we'll do that now. Now that's all sealed up. We got all the caps on. You're going to take your, your funnel, throw it in the oil... Uh, fill or where you check where the dipstick goes you're going to want to fill it through the dipstick hole and we'll go ahead and start putting oil in the manual it's saying the recommended uh, oil quantity uh, without the filter replacement which really very seldom you're going to go without replacing the filter it's so cheap and inexpensive it's it's a safer bet to do that but it's 1.59 quarts without the filter and with the filter it's 1.70 so it's just under uh, just under uh, one and three quarter quarts of oil. So we're gonna go ahead and start adding oil to this and checking it as we go. Um, there was only one real time where I did an oil change on this and that was when we were on our scooter trip to Chicago. We bought this bike on the road and so um, I didn't, we were kind of living off the bike so I didn't have an opportunity to get a filter. So I did do an oil change in like a, O'Reilly parking lot, you know, an automotive store parking lot. So I bought some oil, drained it into an oil pan. They took my oil, and then we uh, we we went ahead and put new oil in it just for peace peace of mind. But you don't have to do that. Um, it's so inexpensive. These filters are like eight bucks. So let's go ahead and get this thing filled. Is once I get close to the uh, amount that I think I've needed, you know, and if you're using quart jars, obviously you're gonna get real close. I'll uh, let it settle for a little bit before I start it and just check the dipstick. Now I'm showing pretty good on the dipstick, so I'm gonna go ahead and fire this thing up and get that filter all saturated real well, and then we will uh, recheck it. So once you want warm the scooter up, then uh, you're gonna let it sit for a minute. You're gonna check, recheck the dipstick, and if everything checks out okay, you're good to go for another run. That's gonna wrap it up for this uh, oil change on the 2009 Yamaha Majesty scooter. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, ask in the comments below and I'll get back with you as soon as I possibly can. And just remember, I'm just a man in a cave causing mayhem. Thanks again for watching.